Last question you're going to see a lot on old exams are these roadmaps that use the phrases optically inactive sugars and optically active sugars. So let's start by defining what that even means. So if you are an optically inactive molecule, you have a plane of symmetry. And I'll, def I'll define what that means in a second, but we're going to have a plane of symmetry. And conversely, if you have an optically active molecule or sugar, you do not have symmetry. You do not have a plane of symmetry. You do not have symmetry. Okay? When we talk about symmetry, what we're talking about is you take your sugar and you cut it in half this way. And are all the OHs on the right on one half the same as all the OHs on the right on the other half? That kind of symmetry. So let's take a look at, say, D mannose. Well, CHO and CH2OH would automatically make it a non symmetric sugar along with the rest of these. But look at your step. Let's go from A to this first. <clears throat> HNO3, we saw in our general reactions video, turns the CHO group and the CH2OH group into COOHs. So Let's uh, keep working with D-mannose, for example. D-mannose, if it was reacted with HNO3, would um, end up looking like this, COOH and COOH. So now the bookends are the same, and now we have to go, OK, if I draw a dotted line straight through the center of this molecule, are the OHs on the bottom half on the same side as the OHs on the top half? And so I see I have two OHs on the right there. I do not have two OHs on the right there. So that would not produce an optically inactive molecule. There is no plane of symmetry here, so that would be optically active. So we can rule out D-mannose as an answer. Where D-mannose is out. And you can do that for the rest of your sugars. So we see that D-idose, if I were to draw a dotted line, Again, we do the HNO3 reaction first. This would become COOH, COOH. But I don't really have to look at that. I can just look at the four OHs in the middle, and I see, well, no, again, there's no plane of symmetry. I have OH and then hydrogen, and I have hydrogen and then OH going that way. So d idose is out as a possible answer as well. Then I have d allose. d allose, if I draw a dotted line through the center, this one will match up when it becomes the the aldearic acid the after reacting with HNO3 because these will become COOHs and now I have two OHs on the right and two OHs on the right on the other half. So d allose is a possible answer that brings A to an optically inactive molecule. Now let's look at d altros d altros two OHs on the, bo uh, two OH bleh, on the bottom half, two OHs on the right, on the top half only one OH, so d altros we can rule out. D talos, if I cut it down the center, two OHs on the left for the top half, only one on the bottom half, so D talos is out. D glucose, cut it down the center, only one on the left for the top, and two on the right for the bottom, not symmetric, so rule that out. D glucose, once again, two on the right, one on the left, no good. And now D galactose, which I just kind of erased partially. That. If I cut D-galactose in half, I have one OH on the left towards the center, one OH on the left on the bottom towards the center, and then one OH on the right for the further carbons. So this does have a plane of symmetry once these both become COOHs. So I just took eight possible sugars as my answer and limited, limited it down to two because these are the only two the only two aldohexoses that when treated with HNO3, where both bookends, the CHO and the CH2OH, become COOH, carboxylic acid, and they produce a, plane, a molecule that is symmetric down the center. So either one of these going from A to this would work. But we need, only one of these can be structure A, so we have to figure out more. So now we're going to go towards B. Now, um, this will often happen in roadmaps. You'll be able to limit your sugar down to one of two. Uh, you'll be limited to like two or three options, and then you have to go in the opposite or opposite direction to figure out which one works better.
So now we have this, let's go down this way. So we're going to take A and we're going to do the rough degradation with it. And remember what the rough degradation does. It chops off the carbon on top and turns the next carbon down into your new CHO uh, group. So if we took D allose and ran the rough degradation with this, so rough degradation, we would end up chopping this whole number, this carbon, one, two, three, four, five, and six. We chop carbon one off, and carbon two will become your new CHO. So CHO. And now this should be five carbons long because I removed one. One, two, three, four. And so here's two, three, four, five, six. Now the stereochemistry of the OHs shouldn't have changed. So I have all of these OHs on the right side. So this is what uh, E would look like if a happens to be D allos. We don't know for sure. Let's look at D galactose and then we'll work towards what becomes optically active or inactive with NADH4. So if I do the uh, rough degradation with, um, uh, with D galactose, again, I'm going to chop off carbon one and turn carbon two into my new CHO. So let's just number these around. And so now I have my new CHO, which is carbon two, connected to the other uh, five car uh, four carbons, rather. CH2OH, one, two, three, four, five. And so I have two, three, four, five, six. And again, the OHs will be in the same spot based on the carbons that were there. So carbon two is no longer an OH at the CHO. Carbon three had the OH on the right. Carbon four had the OH on the left. Uh, sorry, carbon three had the OH on the left. Carbon four had the OH on the left. And carbon five had the OH on the right. Just throw on my hydrogens now. I'll close out over here. Okay. So these are the two possible structures for B, since these were the two possible structures for A. Now we have to rule out which one works and which one doesn't. So the next thing we're told is structure B, which is one of these two. So this might be A, and this might be B. This might be B, and this might be A. But we're told that B, when it's reacted with NADH4, becomes an optically active molecule, a molecule that does not have a plane of symmetry. So what does NABH4 do? NABH4 turns the CHO group into a CH2OH group. So I'm just going to draw that here. This becomes CH2OH, and this becomes CH2OH. So now, which of these two possible structures of B is optically active, does not have a plane of symmetry? Well, once again, you're going to go cutting across the center. In this case, the center is straight through carbon-4, like that. Well, in the case of D-allose's uh, product, you have a clear plane of symmetry. This OH is cut in half, so you could think of the half an OH on either side, and then these two full OHs are also there. So this is a clear plane of symmetry. This would be optically inactive. But we're looking over here. We want it to be optically active, so we can rule D-allose out. D-allose will not work. On the other hand, if I do the same thing for here, cut it straight down through carbon-4, I do not have a plane of symmetry because this OH is on the right, this OH is on the left. So this is an optically active um, structure. So your structures for A and B have to be, for A, D-galactose, and for B, it had to be the aldopentose that came from the rough degradation after, uh, that was from D galactose. So these would be the two answers to this roadmap. And that's generally what you're going to be doing in uh, roadmap questions. They'll tell you one side is optically active, one side is optically inactive, and all that means is do you have a plane of symmetry or not. Again, if you're optically active, you do not have a plane of symmetry. If you are optically inactive, you have a plane of symmetry.